Hi everyone. I'm Dr. Vijay. I'm here to present a, a rare case report on uh, scrotal tuberculosis and its findings on ultrasound and uh, MRI. So only few cases of uh, scrotal TB have been reported in the literature. Though the radiological appearance is very typical, it can be a challenge to differentiate uh, scrotal TB from bacterial epidemiorchitis and uh, other testicular malignancies in a long-standing cases. So here we describe uh, the characteristic findings of scrotal TB on, uh, on, uh, on ultrasound and on MR. So uh, a 56-year-old uh, male patient was referred to us uh, with, a, with, uh, with diffuse uh, painless enlargement of bilateral scrotum. Patient had, patient had fatigue, weight loss. And on examination, uh, we could palpate few enlarged inguinal lymph nodes. Uh, patient was afebrile and his, uh, his lung parenchyma was normal on both uh, CT and radiogram. So, uh, ultrasound was performed uh, for this uh, patient. So, uh, uh, performing ultrasound of scrotum, we found that the uh, both the epididymis, they were bulky and they showed multiple hypoechoic uh, nodular mass. And these uh, hypoechoic nodular mass uh, did not show vascularity with it. But there was increased vascularity uh, adjacent to it. And uh, uh, this is the right testis, the first image, and the second image of left testis. So in, in this left testis, we can see that there was also infiltration uh, into the adjacent uh, scrotal wall. Um, and uh, the testis appear, appeared uh, distorted, although uh, they were not bulky or uh, and they didn't show increased uh, uh, vascularity. There was also edema in the, in the scrotal uh, wall, a, a minimal uh, uh, edema in the scrotal wall. Um, and there were multiple uh, enlarged uh, lymph nodes in the inguinal region. Uh, after ultrasonography, uh, are, uh, the first differential was that, that these hypoechoic lesions are granulomatous uh, lesions. But because there was infiltration into the scrotal wall, uh, or a suspicion of infiltration into the scrotal wall, uh, malignancy was also uh, suspected. So, uh, MR was performed uh, for this patient. On uh, MRI, in T1 weighted images, uh, we could see a uh, few uh, uh, or multiple intermediate signal intensity lesions in, in, in both the uh, hemiscotum, which corresponded to the hypoechoic nodular mass on ultrasound. Uh, and they were not seen separately from uh, epididymis. Whereas on uh, on T2, uh, in the right hemiscrotum, uh, the lesion showed intermediate to high signal intensity. Whereas in left hemiscrotum, it was more of a high point uh, nodular lesions, which were also seen on the surface of uh, testis. And uh, there was a, a small hydrosis in the, in, the, in the left hemiscrotum, which appeared high point on uh, T1 and hyper intense on uh, T2 weighted images. So, uh, in the right hemiscrotum, as you see here, these hyperintense uh, areas, um, on histopathological correlation, we realized that these hyperintense uh, areas, they, they correspond to the necrotic changes that happen in the granulomatous uh, region. Uh, so, in, in, uh, in literature, uh, there, are, there are not many uh, Enough uh, descriptions about uh, the how these granulomatous lesions in the scrotum uh, behave on on diffusion weighted uh, imaging. In in our case, there was uh, there was there was diffusion restriction. As you see, uh, it was hyperintense on DWA, and uh, the corresponding areas on ADC showed uh, low values. Uh, normal testes uh, does show a diffusion restriction, and that is what uh, was seen in our uh, case too. So, uh, because of this mark uh, division, uh, division restriction, uh, lymphoma was also uh, considered as a as a differential diagnosis. But in our case, uh, testis was not bulky, and uh, testis as such did not show uh, any any lesions, though they were distorted. On post contrast uh, images. And, and uh, this is the first image of T1 uh, fat set uh, pre contrast action image and uh, T1 fat set uh, post contrast action mm -hmm. image. We see that there is heterogeneous post contrast enhancement, but there are also few non enhancing areas within the lesions. 
So these non-enhancing areas, they corresponded to the hyperintense uh, signal on T2 and also these hypointense uh, nodular uh, signals on the surface of testes in the, in the left hemisphere. So uh, they were not enhancing, but uh, uh, otherwise uh, it showed heterogeneous uh, enhancement. And uh, again, on uh, sagittal image, uh, T1 uh, uh, post-contrast images, you can see that the epidermis is not seen separately from the region. And uh, the palatal testes, they were they were not bulky, but they were, and also they were they were distorted. In the left hemisphere, you can see uh, high point ends, I mean non-enhancing areas on the surface of the distance. And uh, what we also saw was there's a there's loss of fat plane between the granulomatous lesion and the scrotal wall, uh, anteriorly, which exhibited heterogeneous post-contrast uh, enhancement, uh, which suggested that there is scrotal wall uh, involvement. Again, in, in the literature, there are not many examples of uh, uh, scrotal uh, tuberculosis where the granulomatous uh, lesion also uh, involves a scrotal wall. Uh, uh, this was seen in our case where, where there was also involvement of the scrotal uh, wall. Um, bilateral spermatic cord were also uh, thickened and showed uh, enhancement. Uh, and also, there were a uh, few inguinal, enlarged uh, inguinal lymph nodes, uh, though they were not uh, conglomerated. So, uh, after this, uh, our, our, our diagnosis was of granulomatous uh, uh, lesion that was uh, tuberculous uh, epidermoarchitis. Uh, but, uh, uh, but since the patient uh, condition was deteriorating, uh, Orchidectomy was uh, performed, and uh, on histopathological examination, uh, it turned out to be uh, uh, granulomatous lesion uh, on on histopath. But uh, but the patients with uh, tuberculous epidermoarchitis, they they respond well to anti-tuberculous therapy, and uh, literature suggests that an orchidectomy is only essential if there is abscess formation within the testes. And, but often the diagnosis is established after orchidectum uh, because uh, because of suspicion of uh, testicular uh, malignancy, as in our uh, uh, case. So uh, the biopsy should should always be performed when epidermoarchitis is uh, the part of differential uh, diagnosis. Again, in uh, the differences in our case uh, included bacterial orchitis and uh, malignancy, but uh, history of patient. Uh, and uh, to uh, lymphadenopathy, absence of uh, tenderness or increased temperature of scrotum, and failure to respond to conventional antibiotics. They all suggested uh, tubercular uh, orchitis uh, or uh, tubercular epidermis that was also confirmed with uh, histopathology. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, uh, the take home uh, point is that in patients presenting with uh, scrotal swelling, which which is not very painful and on ultrasound when we uh, find uh, nodular uh, masses uh, on epididymis on epid uh, epididymis and uh, testes, it should alert the radiologist of a possible diagnosis of uh, tuberculous epididymis and consider mycobacterium tuberculosis as the cause, especially if there is no response to the conventional uh, antibiotic treatment. So uh, these were my uh, references, which also included. Uh, only uh, like uh, some of the very few cases that have been reported on uh, spotted tuberculosis. Uh, thank you.